90% reality, 90% hype. And that's in a nutshell of my one hour lecture on global warming. <laughs> but what do we see when we, uh, we're in glaciated areas? Well, this is the, the Athabasca Glacier in Canada between Banff and Jasper. And in 1890, it was at this point right here. And it's been receding back. So what do we see? Well, we see all kinds of rocks of various sizes uh, mixed together. And in places, we see fine-grained uh, sands and silts and clays mixed in. It's kind of a jumble. And we see these, these uh, mounds. This, uh, this is an end moraine. And we see these mounds along the edge called lateral moraines right in here. These moraines were formed by, as the ice pushes out, it pushes the debris ahead of it and piles it up into a mound in the front called a terminal or end moraine, and on the sides it's called a lateral moraine. And that's what we see uh, in glaciated areas. And here's a picture of the lateral moraine, very sharp looking, very recent, when it's so sharp. It hasn't eroded and become more rounded with time. Also, you see a lot of scratch bedrock as, as there's, there's rocks in the bottom of the glacier and they move over the bottom and they end up scratching the bedrock, forming striations, or striated pavements, they call them. Also, you see a lot of the rocks or boulders themselves all scratched up, and sometimes in different directions, like here's one set going that way, and there's another set going this way. And that's probably because the boulder turned in the bottom of the ice as it moved, and so it got scratched in a different direction. This is very typical of glaciated areas. So when we look at uh, the northern United States, Canada, we see features that indicate that it was once glaciated. Here's the northern Rockies, uh, the Rocky Mountain front uh, west of Great Falls, Montana. This hat was covered by ice, and this is out in the plains near Augusta, Montana, about 10 miles out. Here's a, a mound that looks like a terminal moraine, and I'm on the other side here. It was breached here, probably when the ice melted it, it tore through the end moraine and breached it right in here, but that looks like a typical uh, en uh, end moraine from a glaciated area. And when you look at the, the material in it, it's rocks of all different sizes in a jumbled up ma mass, a lot of times surrounded by finer grain, the, the larger rocks surrounded by uh, smaller rocks and, and finer grain matrix. V very typical of glaciated areas we see today. And this is an area on the plains where it gets in the, in the 80s in the summertime, uh, pretty warm. Also, as we go into the Sun River Canyon, further west, we, we go up the cliff, uh, uh, there's an 800-foot cliff right there, right? The high plains are just, we're at the edge of the high plains in the Rockies. Here's some scratched bedrock going towards the east, just as you'd expect uh, if the area was glaciated. There's all kinds of erratic boulders around there, boulders that don't outcrop right at that spot, but are, were carried from a distance around this area. Also, we see a lot of scratched uh, boulders that were in the ice, and the scratches are in different directions. Typical glaciation we see today. So the main conclusion is this area was glaciated not that long ago. And we see all these, in the mountainous areas of the western United States, we see all these horseshoe-shaped lateral and end moraines coming out from the mountain, a mountain valley out into the plains. This is, um, this is uh, Lake Wallula in the Wallula Mountains, uh, northeast Oregon. This is Enterprise, uh, Oregon down in here. This is Joseph. And it's about 4,000 feet altitude. It probably gets to an average high of 90 there in the summertime. And yet we have this nice lateral moraine here, smaller end moraine and lateral moraine here, and an over-deepened Lake Wallula. And when we see it from the bottom, look at those trees for scale. That, that is about 600 feet tall, very sharp looking. In other words, it didn't happen that long ago. <coughs> And when you look at the material in the lateral moraine, it's the typical rocks and a, and a finer grain matrix you see in uh, glaciated areas today, indicating the Wallawa Mountains were glaciated and it spread a little ways out into the plain around Enterprise, Oregon. Also, we see these huge erratic boulders in spots on the plains. This is the Okotok erratics, uh, southwest of Calgary. By the way, this is uh, John Woodmerapi for scale right here. Some of you uh, might know him. But this is a very angular quartzite erratic, quartzite being a very hard sand, uh, metamorphic sandstone. The only way, it, and it didn't roll, it couldn't have rolled out there because it's very sharp edges. It, it had to come out by an iceberg during the ice age and be deposited there. But we find these in, uh, and all kinds of erratics in northern Montana and Alberta. I've seen thousands and thousands of them before where they don't outcrop anywhere in Montana. They, they're probably from the Canadian Shield. Also, it's, we have some interesting erratics. Uh, this is an erratic of uh, kind of a shale. It's a 
metamorphic shale called argillite, and it's, it gets a little tougher, and this is found southwest of Portland, Oregon, and the, it does not crop in Oregon. This type of rock does not outcrop in Oregon. The nearest outcrop is up uh, around western Montana, northeast, uh, northern Idaho. This, like, this came from the Lake Missoula flood, which I'll talk about towards the end. Very angular, and that, that's not going to roll down by water because it's, it's like a shale and it's not very tough and it would pulverize, it would be pulverized in the flow in about uh, one mile probably. The only way you can get down there is by an iceberg during the Lake Missoula flood. So when you add it all up, here's the big picture. Uh, we had uh, uh, ice, an ice sheet in the northern United States approximately on this uh, position here through down to Puget Sound to Olympia, uh, northern Montana to Great Falls, Montana down to near uh, uh, north of uh, St. Louis, uh, Missouri, and then up a lot of New England was glaciated, and a lot of the mountains were glaciated. But it's kind of interesting that the mountains of Alaska were glaciated, but not the lowlands. Why is that? Now that's rather strange, and I will give a quote from the mainstream scientists how strange it is when they run their models, they end up glaciating right away the lowlands and uh, the mountains. So why weren't they glaciated? Well, it's because I think they have the wrong concept of the Ice Age. In uh, Eurasia, this is where the ice uh, approximately was. It, uh, the Alps were covered. Uh, much of uh, northern Europe, Scandinavia, most of England. Uh, it's a little, and then northwest uh, Asia. Now, it's a little controversial in this area. Uh, this area probably maybe was not glaciated right in here. And it's possible that the Barents Sea, right north of Norway here, had an ice sheet. But that's all disputed right now. So the boundaries of this ice sheet, uh, called the Scandinavian ice sheet, are not quite known. So that's what uh, it, it adds up to. Can, okay, can the mainstream scientists explain the ice age? You know, you read some books or hear a, a professor talk. Sometimes the way some of these people talk, it makes it, it sound like that the ice age is a, K, uh, is, is a showcase for uniformitarian geology, in other words, their paradigm. Actually, just the opposite is the case. And <coughs> we can find that out by, first of all, we've got to know what the requirements for an ice age are. The requirements are cooler summers. Most areas where the ice occurred are already cool enough in winter. That's not the problem. We've got to cool the summers off. Not only that, we have to have much greater snowfall. And it has to persist. You can't just get a climate change for, for one summer. But it has to persist year after year. The snow builds up, changes to ice. It'll change to ice by either pressure or by meltwater in the summer percolating down and then it refreezes forming the ice. There's two ways to form the ice from the, from the snow. So how